So in the last video, I gave you the distributivity property, the distributive property, which which I believe was R times the addition of vector W or V with, with the vector W was equal to, to me taking R times V, the vector V, and adding it to R times the vector W. Now, to prove this, I hope you gave it a try and the, I'm going to prove it for you in in this video. However, the best way to prove this would be to use the left hand side equal to the right hand side proof strategy. So how does that work? First, you just define them. You say, well, W could be A and then B. And then, you know, it's, sorry, I meant to say V, your vector V could be this and then your vector W could be the C and D. And then you also have to be clear about how R is an element of the reals because we don't know that. R could be an element of the complex for all I know. So, you know, you've, you've got to be clear about what you want and what you, and what you will be using. So you start doing that here and, you know, you, you start seeing that eventually. So you start with one portion and so the goal with this is maybe you start with this and you try to end right here and that would be your proof and you and then you just say well as you can see the left hand side was equal to the right hand side therefore I'm right. So let's just start with this side. So R times this would be what? So we know what th these are. What we know what vector V is and we know what vector W is. So let me So let me just move that for you. Let me just move that and let me make it a little bit smaller so you have the whole proof um you know in in one slide so those are our conditions so using those we know that this would be equal to what's vector v vector v is that so that would be a and then b we're adding it to vector w which is that which is c and then d and we are closing that we know how to add vectors because we have been doing that for for a while now and we so that would be equal to me adding them so that would be a plus so that would be a plus c and then that would be b plus d b plus d now i can get rid of those brackets so this would be just r times a plus c and then this would be b plus d now, one thing that I don't want you to be afraid of is, you know, how would you solve a problem if I was multiplying R by a vector which has components alpha and beta? You know, you would just simply just distribute it in. So you would have, so this would be R times alpha and then R times beta. And we, we know what this is. This is scalar multiplication. So with the same logic, we can do that and we can apply it right over here. So we can say, well, this would be the same as me taking well, you know, multiplying R by A plus C and then doing that below as well, R times B plus D. So now that we have that, what do we do after this? So what we do is we distribute it in and the reason why we can do that is because we know that this slot is working in just R. And I, you know, and if you ever need, um, you know, some, some sort of tangible um, thing to, to say in your proof, you can just say, well, I know the, one of the axioms. The, according to the real number system axioms, I know that I can do that in this slot. And if you don't know that, you can just watch my first video of this series. So after we do that, we should get Ra plus Rc, and then we have Rb plus Rd. Now, one thing, one very special thing about this is that we can just split this up again. There is no reason for us to, you know, put these together because, you know, it's both addition and, you know, and it kind of makes sense for us to split this because we want to get to that. So let me split this. So this would be the same. This would be equal to me saying R times A and down low R times B and this vector being added to, to the vector R times C and R times D. If you are doubting me, you can just go the other way around. Is it true if this, so, you know, in, in your mind, you can just think, is, is it true that this is equal to that? In fact, it is. So, you know, if, again, if you are doubting me, you can, you can test that by yourself. Now, one thing that we know about scalar multiplication is, you know, as we just undid, um, I don't know if that's a word. However, I, I, you know, I just went back and I just 
So, you know, instead of putting two vectors together, I just split them just by using ve uh, vector addition. And I'm going to do that again by using scalar multiplication because th this, this, so this is the same thing. This would be equal to R times A and B. So just make sure, that, you know, you know that. And if, if, if somebody, uh, you know, that doubts you, you can just say that this was just vector addition. And what I'm about to do now, this is just scalar multiplication. So that, and then add it to R times C and D. However, in our original definition, we said that V was equal to this. So therefore, this is V. So we, we say this is equal to R times vector V added to, added to R times what, you know, what is this? We defined this material, this array of C and D to be the vector W. So we say then this is vector W. And there you go. That's the proof because you can clearly see from the left hand side how the left hand side is this and the right hand side it's this and that's exactly and that's exactly what we had to prove so that's all i have for this video and i will see you in the next video thank you so much for watching